Hi there, you may have heard me mention that I've been watching a lot of the Olympics recently. That's fairly typical for me. I really like watching the Olympics, which is perhaps unusual because I'm not a sports watching kind of person. Never been a thing I'm into, certainly not good at playing them. But something about the Olympics I really enjoy watching. You have to sort of ignore a lot of extraneous stuff about how wasteful and expensive and commercialized and all that they are, but the the core of it, the spirit of international competition, I really enjoy. I also really like graphic design. And I was looking at the Tokyo 2020 logo and remembering a lot of iconic Olympics logos from the past and thought, I should look at all of them. So I went on to the Google and I tried to find a list of all the previous Olympic logos and all the search results on the first couple pages are just top 10 list best and worst Olympic logos, which I refused to look at because I want my wholly unfettered opinion of these logos to not become fettered by other people's opinions. The point is, I'm going to go through all the Olympic logos and just talk about them for a bit. I'm not going to rank them because that's just a profound amount of work that I'm not interested in doing. Uh, I'm, I, I'm going to rank them chronologically <laughs> and tell you which ones I like and don't like and, and, and why. But again, my opinions are just my opinions and nobody needs to care what they are. Um, let, let's begin at the beginning. Asterisk. I don't mean the beginning of the Olympic Games, because at the very beginning, they didn't have a logo or emblem, as they're called now. They just, they were just the Olympics. There were some real banger posters for the first several years, but not really an emblem for a while until sort of the 30s. There was some early stuff with like a Paris coat of arms with a ship, but you know, not really much in the way of like unique emblem iconography. So yeah, shout outs though to Amsterdam for this Art Deco terror, which I love. This is eye bending, but I love it. Boy, is this ever 1920s. This is quintessential of the era, but it's a little challenging to look at. 1932 Winter Games, Lake Placid. Lake Placid also doesn't really have an emblem. It has like this sort of Olympic rings and type mark, but there is a very famous poster that is often thought of as the logo. On the one hand, I really like the design. It's very 1930s travel poster, looks really cool. It's very graphic. The elements are laid out well, with the exception that for whatever reason, the skier is moving right to left and they don't have to be moving in that direction. And I'd rather they weren't because right now they're moving away from Lake Placid. I also appreciate that the, they have to put a map going, here's where Lake Placid is, because no one's ever heard of where Lake Placid is until the 1932 Winter Olympics. Overall, it's fine. Now, in this era, the Olympics, or an Olympiad, was only once every four years, and the host nation, at least for a while, had to host both the Summer and Winter Olympics in the same year. So this was Lake Placid in 1932, and then that takes us to Summer Games 1932, Los Angeles. Quintessential America, gotta get in on the big X, it's the X-th Olympiad. Can't say 10th, no, it's the X-th. And boy, is this ever a very American emblem. Not the most American emblem we're gonna see, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, stylish it's classic you have the rings you have a laurel branch symbol of victory and this latin motto which translates to faster higher stronger which you know not my favorite daft punk song still generally speaking pretty good the logo overall it's nice it's just you know it's not really what we know of as a logo or an emblem today i think it's a little busy especially around the laurel but yeah sure it's okay Winter Games 1936, Garmisch Partenkirchen. I apologize for my pronunciation. Germany had to host both games again. So Summer Games, you get Berlin. Winter Games, you get Garmisch Partenkirchen. And uh, and here's the logo for that. It's It's got a mountain on it, specifically Al Spitz Mountain. Um, it's a mountain, it's the Olympic rings. There's 
the words around the outside. Um, I'm sure this would make a great patch or lapel pin, and it is otherwise uh, largely uninteresting as an Olympic emblem, but thank you for trying. Summer Games 1936, Berlin. I mean, it's not great, is it? I mean, for a variety of obvious reasons. Uh, there's the Imperial Eagle. Um, these games were, of course, opened by Chancellor Adolf Hitler, and it was sort of a lot of Nazi imagery all throughout the games. So, big minuses for that. Also, just as a logo, it's also just not great. The Olympic rings are like weirdly wide splayed. Uh, so we would call that off model. There's a motto sort of rammed into the bottom of the bell that says, I call the youth of the world, which is, I suppose, fine, but it's not particularly laid out in there. This was a revision. They originally had the eagle and the rings on the Brandenburg Gate, which is a Berlin landmark, and the organizing committee didn't like it and wanted it on a bell, which is not a thing. I don't know why. They built a bell. They made a bell in a bell tower for the games. The bell tower was uh, blown up later by the British. The bell survived, rendered inoperable, but the bell, you know, was around there. But um, yeah, this one sucks. Summer Games, 1940, Tokyo. D didn't happen. This this one didn't didn't happen. This is the logo they made for it, and then Tokyo is going to be Tokyo for the Summer Games and Sapporo for the Winter Games, and then Japan went back to the International Olympic Committee and were like, actually, uh, we we surrender the right to do these games uh, for a variety of political reasons, and probably a good move in hindsight to not have them do that, but it meant that everyone else was working in a scramble. They were going to have St. Moritz host it, and then there was a problem with allowing professional ski instructors involved that upset the International Ski Federation, and then they said that we'll just get Garmisch Parchenkarchen to host them again, along with Helsinki, and then there was a war, so then that none of that happened. This logo is medium at best. Winter Games 1948, St. Moritz. They had about 15 months to organize these Olympic Games, which is why there's not really an emblem to speak of. There's a bunch of iconography elements that San Moritz used, like this type mark of the town, which was like a registered trademark of like, this is we put, this is when it says San Moritz, we'll put this on stuff. And there's some posters that they made with this sun emblem that they've used in a couple different situations. But the end result, basically nothing for San Moritz. Summer Games, 1948, London. Oof. What a, you didn't even try. It's, we'll say that it's London, it's 1948, we'll get the rings on there, we'll get the clock tower, as it was known at the time, now the Elizabeth Tower. Uh, there we go. Make it look like a woodblock print. Knock off for lunch. Fun detail, the hands on the clock are at four o'clock, which is when the opening ceremony, when the games officially opened. So like, that's a neat detail, but otherwise, it's like England wasn't even trying. In fairness, there had been some things happening for them recently. Winter Games 1952, Oslo. On the upside, it's clean. It's very well laid out. On the downside, it's just a circle and the Olympic rings and Oslo City Hall. So, eh, don't love it. Summer Games 1952, Helsinki. I mean, this is at least a little more interesting, visually. It's the Olympic Stadium, like this tower and the stadium were made for the Olympics, so it's not a pre-existing landmark. It's sort of like a emblem of yourself in some ways. But I don't know, I, I think it at least looks a little bit more interesting. It looks more like a travel poster than an emblem, but it looks nice. Eh. The 1952 games, neither of them are high tier. Winter Games 1956, Cortina. Now we're getting much more into what we know now as Olympic emblems. This one was done through a design contest. Many of them over the years have been done through design contests. And this one had some pretty rigorous requirements. It had to include all that text. It had to include the rings. It had to include the Dolomites, the mountain range. At least it had to include something evocative of the fact that the Dolomite mountain range is part of the environment. And something about winter sports competition, which is why there's the snow crystal motif around the outside. 
boy howdy are we gonna see a lot more snowflake snow crystals in the iconography as the Winter Olympics continue. This one looks nice. It's not outstanding. I already mentioned the one from about 20 years prior that was just a mountain and the Olympic rings in a circle, and this is a much better version of that, but it's not anything special by itself. Summer Games 1956, Melbourne. Asterisk, because not all of the 1956 Summer Games we're in Melbourne. <laughs> this is strange. I'll explain more in a moment. The logo by itself, it's nice. I like this. It's classical, right? It it sort of evokes a classical style of much earlier than 1950s graphic design. My favorite detail is how the point of the Olympic torch is pinpointing Melbourne on the map of Australia in there. It's nice, it's not bad. The asterisk, by the way, is that these Olympics, the 1956 Summer Games, took place in Melbourne and Stockholm <laughs> at different times because Australia has very, very strict biodiversity laws and quarantine around moving animals. And so all of the equestrian events had to take place somewhere else um, <laughs> five months earlier. So Stockholm had their own thing, the Olympic Equestrian Games, earlier in 1956, with their own logo, which sort of harkens back to Greek, because again, the Olympics started in Athens, and so it's like an Elgin marble Greek thing of someone riding a horse. So, you know, sure, hey, it's functional. You work with what you have. If you've only got the horse things to show off, then I guess your logo's gonna be, it's gonna be the horse thing. Uh, you know, generally speaking, Melbourne, yeah, right, not bad. Winter Games 1960, Squaw Valley. Now, this is supposed to be a snow crystal. I mentioned we'd be seeing more of them. I put it to you that that is a very abstract interpretation of, of a snow crystal. Uh, they liked this logo because it was flexible. They could use different colors on it. There's a couple different variants that were used. Um, I, I wouldn't have. I would have used not this logo. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I It does not immediately read to me as like, oh yeah, definitely, that's a snowflake. It just sort of, it's just kind of shapes. And I think the colors don't help that. Any Olympics in the US, they cannot resist using red, white, and blue in the logos, and this is no exception. Summer Games, 1960, Rome. Ha ha! <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's Romulus and Remus being nursed by a wolf. Yup. Um, it looks like, the way that this is done with relief, it looks like something that would be atop a Roman legionnaire standard that's being carried into battle by a, not a centurion, but the whoever carries the standard bearers in the Roman army. Um, I like that the rings, uh, hi Baxter, are you gonna be involved in this now? Okay, well, come on. I like that the rings, the way that they're shaded makes them look like chainmail. That's neat. This is also like the only Olympic emblem that doesn't mention the games or the city in text. Like that's the Olympic rings, obviously, and that's definitely, <laughs> two babies chowing down on wolf milk, but otherwise, uh, it's not, this one, this one, is, is it good? Is it bad? This one's hard to rank. I'm, it, it is extant. Good for it. Winter Games, 1964, Innsbruck. Yeah, this is fine. It's serviceable. They're using a motif from the Innsbruck coat of arms. It's a, it's a bridge with roofed towers on it and uh, the text goes around it and the rings are there. The rings are a little thin, which is sort of unusual for how they're often depicted in Olympic emblems. Again, this was before there was like a definite style guide of exactly how they had to look, but yeah, it's, um, it's not bad. It's the winter games. People didn't care about them as much back then. I don't think people care about them as much now, but I'm Canadian, so I have a different perspective on it. Summer Games, 1964, 
Tokyo. Absolute banger alert. It's so simple. It's so simple. It's the big red sun from the flag and gold rings, great mid-century text. It's awesome. The whole color scheme was red and white with gold as an accent color, and it just looked amazing. All the typography and layout on the programs was great. It's so, it's so clean. They couldn't do this again for Tokyo 2020 because they've already done it. I don't even know if there's an Olympic Games that gets better than this because it's so simple. It's just like, yo, it's our flag and gold, and which is just like, you know, it's the, the gold medal. It's everyone's chasing the gold at the Olympics. Awesome. Winter Games 1968, Grenoble. This is good, we're getting better. We've got the snow crystal, snowflake. We've got three roses from the Grenoble coat of arms. And yeah, it looks nice. They're arranged nicely. I dig it. Good job, Grenoble. Summer Games 1968, Mexico City. Holy moly, look at this. This is peak 60s. I love this. Yes, it's a little tricky to parse the rings, but the way that the two lower rings nestle into the circles in the 68, I it's very cool. Also, there's some variants of this which are expanded and holy crap. Like this is this is graphic design kind of like this is showing off graphic design, right? This is not necessarily for, you know, like easy to print on a hat. This is like, look at how cool this looks from a graphic design perspective. I love Mexico 68 and all this branding. This is very cool. Winter Games 1972, Sapporo. So they would eventually have a Winter Olympics in Sapporo, which is cool. I mean, in Tokyo 2020, they had the Summer Olympics also partly in Sapporo. They had like the road race in Sapporo, which is a thousand kilometers north of Tokyo, and it was still super hot. Um, anyway, you would think, following on the back of 1964's absolute banger of a logo, that they'd be able to just knock it out of the park again. And they didn't. They didn't. I don't love this. It's like, sure, we've got the, the rising sun and this snowflake motif, but they're like stacked in an awkward column, same font as Tokyo. The snowflake design apparently is a traditional design dating back hundreds of years. It's shown up in early Chinese texts as well. Like it's a very, very old, this specific snowflake. It indicates the first snow of the season. That's nice. It, the stack, it's just the way that it's laid out visually kind of a womp womp after the Tokyo one. The bottom box feels unbalanced to the other. It doesn't, the, the visual balance is no bueno. Summer Games, 1972, Munich. Uh, yeah, it sure is the 70s. Um, they, the, the layout here is a little awkward. There's other variants that aren't quite so like wide open. The actual sort of emblem part, that kind of spiral wreath, I think they called it. Uh, it was done in a hurry and it's fine. Frankly, I expect better from Germany, but it's it's okay. It, it, it is a pleasing design. Just the, the wreath is pleasing. The rest of it is not amazing. The, the whole doesn't mesh. Winter Games 1976, Innsbruck. Well, I mean, if it worked once, uh, <laughs> we've swapped out the fonts, uh, you know, serif out, sans serif in. Uh, take the colors out of the rings, and easy. I think they were also in a rush. They got the same designer and paid him very not a lot. Uh, so that was cheap, I guess. Um, minus points for just being a repeat. Summer Games 1976, Montreal. Yeah, Canada hosting a Summer Games. How about that? This is a prime example of a Canadian design movement at the time that in retrospect is called Canada Modern. And it's, it's really nice. 
and clean. They have a lot of different things going on with this, even though it's still like, well, you just, it's the Olympic rings and you extended them upwards. Yeah, but it also kinda is the shape of the maple leaf of Canada, sorta. There's the pavilions in there. The center oval is meant to be the track, which at, certainly at the time is considered the, the sort of the nexus of summer games athleticism, you know, like all the track and field and the decathlon and everything like that. Um, I understand why someone might think that this is lazy and simple, and that is okay for you. Again, these are just my opinions. I love this. I think this is really clean and excellent. Also, it's kind of like an M from Mont Montreal. Yeah? Mm -hmm. All right? All right? Cool. Winter Games 1980, Lake Placid. We're back to Lake Placid. We know where it is now, thanks to that, that map. And uh, we have this emblem, which is not great. Um, it, it, there's a mountain. Uh, it's meant to be like you're going down and then there's the mountain and uh, you got the, the red, white, and blue. And um, sorry, Lake Placid, it's just not great. Yeah. Summer Games 1980, Moscow. Ooh, boy, that is, ooh, mm, ooh, that's Soviet. That is super Soviet. That is clean. It's looking a little like the Atari logo. Obviously not, not intended. It's referencing Moscow architecture. It's also all competitors coming together to chase the pinnacle of achievement, the star, which is also itself the Soviet star, but on, in this, it is both the Soviet star and just the, st you know, you get a gold star, the star, the the thing that everyone strives for, the stars in the sky and moving together. I'm not explaining it very well, but it's very good. This is a good one. Winter Games 1984, Sarajevo. So here is another similar sort of intent as like the Moscow one or other ones that we've seen, the Montreal ones as well, where it's just one graphic element, solid color, simple, gets the point across. It's another snow crystal. This one is stylized like local embroidery, apparently. And it's not bad. Again, there are many of these that are just like, it's a snow crystal. And this one is one of them. It's not my favorite, but yeah, it's all right. It's, I dig this one. It's just not, you know, as high on the personal list. Summer Games 1984, Los Angeles. So the intent with this one was to create a sense of motion in the logo and also that the overlapping stars was meant to be like a coming together of international competition because it was all these international stars being one, it's, it's, it looks like the most American thing you could possibly do. I don't know what in here they told themselves indicates anything beyond America number one. It's red, white, and blue. There's 13 stripes, just like the flag. It's stars. Uh, it's, you know, it's, uh, it, it's just, you know, I mean, like stuff like, Innsbruck was just like, uh, it's a thing from our, from, from our, uh, coat of arms. And, you know, I guess this is basically the same as that, but they had the gall <laughs> to say that this represented more than just America, which, uh, it doesn't. I just, this is the, it's, it's the most 80s. It looks, this should be on the side of a shoe. Sorry, Los Angeles, it's not good. Winter Games 1988, Calgary. It's another snow crystal, uh, but looks kind of like a maple leaf. Again, I guess that's the sort of thing that we're doing. Uh, but again, it's not just maple leaves, Los Angeles. It's a snowflake that evokes the imagery of a maple leaf. Also, it's made of seas, big seas and small seas. The small seas are for Calgary, the big seas are for Canada, apparently. Honestly, I'm actually not like in love with this one. Like it I think it's it's easily one of the better we just made a stylized snowflake uh <laughs> logos and I appreciate that it looks like a maple leaf. 
but I don't know, there's something just about the the very clean edges that that maybe isn't isn't amazing. Maybe it's not the nationalism of the Los Angeles one that bugs me. Maybe I just think it is ugly. Maybe that's why. Because this I don't think is ugly. I think this is nice. It's just maybe not my favorite. Anyway, Calgary. Summer Games 1988. Soul. This is very cool. I like colors. <laughs> I like colors. I like when people use colors. No, I like, I like uh, colors. This is a traditional Korean pattern. This swirl. It's nice. I don't have a lot to complain about here. It's just like, it, come come to Seoul, check out the games. I don't like how the rings butt right up against the spiral, and I don't love the font. There's so much space between the letters and the font, it looks like there's no space between the letters and the date that it just sort of runs together. I don't know what font I'd use necessarily, but you know, I'm being a little bit more nitpicky now, but I don't like how those butt up against each other. Winter Games 1992, Albertville, or Al 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 Albertville, it's, fr it's in France. The, the white cross on the red is the Savoy flag, which is where Albertville is. Uh, the flame, it's the Olympic flame. And the uh, lined <laughs> paper in the background is because this looks like something that would be on uh, like a school binder um, in the 90s. This is very 90s, and uh, it's like, this is the, this is very 1990s design in a way that is not good. Uh, the, the, the way the flame is moving reminds me of something from a video game. I can't think of what exactly, maybe from like Mario Brothers, but this looks like uh, an enemy or a power-up from a video game. It's coming at you. Uh, Summer Games 1992, Barcelona. Yes, that is Times New Roman. Not what I'd expect to see on an emblem, but it was 1992. And this is the, the, the jumping, the happy, apparently this person is laughing. Um, this joyful athlete uh, leaping through the early 90s in a way that only early 90s graphic design can. And the, the colors, um, the blue is the Mediterranean, the, the yellow, red, oranges in the logo are meant to be the the heat of Iberia and the the flaming soul of Spain, and uh, it all sort of comes together for me to look profoundly dated. <laughs> I sorry, um, but uh, but it won't be the last that looks very similar to this. Winter Games 1994, Lillehammer. Now, while this looks like the cover of a textbook for learning a programming language <laughs> and is absolute, this may, might be more peak 90s than the Barcelona one. I do like the stylized Aurora Borealis at this time of year and the way that it fades into snow, that it's the, the sky, the, you know, the Norwegian sky, uh, fading into the snow that encapsulates the, the lower half of the image. I do like that. The the overall, it, it, this is also just incredibly 90s. It's not Times New Roman this time. I'm not sure exactly what font that is. But yeah, while the, the, the entirety of the image, uh, again, it looks like a piece of enterprise software. The, the, the Aurora image, specifically is very clean. Summer Games 1996, Atlanta. A couple interesting things in this one. This is the 100th anniversary of the Olympics. And so they have that in the column at the bottom, the 100 in this like very tall, narrow font. I like that a lot. I like that it goes from the Olympic flame. There's this one big red flame and then the smaller flames that come off of it become more and more like a star until there's this gold star at the very top. The, the, the flame sort of morphs into this centered gold star that is, you know, like I said for the Moscow one, it's the, the star, like I said for the Tokyo one, it's gold. It's what the athletes are reaching for coming from the flame. This is actually really clean. They're falling a little bit into the 90s with the other colors. <laughs> 
between the Red of the Flame and the gold thing at the top. And we won't talk about the Atlanta mascot that was an absolute effing terror show. But this logo, honestly, easily the best logo that's ever come from a US Olympics. It's almost there just with some odd color choices, but this is a really good one. Winter Games 1998, Nagano. This is really nice. This has the same sort of 90s color palette problem as the Atlanta one, but it's a snow flower, which it's, it's a very stylized snow flower, which is a mountain plant. And the petals of it are stylized silhouettes of athletes doing various winter events. Um, it's like not in the top five or anything, but this one's, this one's really nice. Summer Games 2000, Sydney. I love you, Australia. I don't love this logo. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's called the Millennium Man. Uh, hymns made of boomerangs, because they're like, what do people know about Australia? Kangaroos, not gonna do that one. Boomerangs, print it, great. We'll put boomerangs on the logo. The colors of the logo are apparently the sea, the Australian sun, and the red earth of Australia. The flames or smoke coming off of what could be the Olympic torch are also the silhouette of the Sydney Opera House. I like that. That's really cool. The overall design is inspired by Australian Aboriginal designs. And this is the first of several that we'll see that the logo is inspired by or paying homage to indigenous peoples by governments that still treat them like garbage. So that's another reason I don't love it. Winter Games 2002, Salt Lake City. Hey, here's the next one of those. It's a Navajo inspired snowflake design. Uh, don't worry, Canada's also on the list. I'm not just crapping on other countries. The colors here are meant to be the, the Olympic flame or an amber sun, that's the yellow at the top, and then a desert sunset, and then the mountain shadow, like sort of just past sunset where the mountains look blue and everything. I, I like that idea. I don't actually think the colors combine in a visually pleasing way on this thing. It's low on my list of stylized snowflakes. Uh, maybe Calgary is just higher up on that list than, than I initially thought. This one's not great. Summer Games 2004, Athens. So I, I'm of several different minds about this one. On the one hand, it's instantly recognizable as Greek, that it's blue and white, and just the, the square and the olive branch, the symbol of peace, you know, that's great. On the other hand, I don't think it makes a great logo as it is like this, but then again, it's Athens, that's where the game started. You, you know, you can't, you, you kind of just got to give them that. It's like, yeah, this is, you know, sure, this maybe isn't a great logo, but this is sort of evoking, uh, you know, this massive cultural history. So yeah, you know what, Athens, we'll give it to you. Winter Games 2006, Torino. That is a building. It's the Mole Antonelliana. And I'm sure I mispronounced that, but not as bad as I mispronounced that German city earlier. And it's a famous landmark in the city of Torino or Turin. And uh, it's, this is very 2000s <laughs> in the same way that some of the ones we looked at earlier were very of their era. This is very mid 2000s, but you know, it works. It's sort of meaningless in a vacuum unless you know that it's referencing that landmark. And then when you do, you're like, oh yeah, okay, sure. That completely works. So yeah, yeah, all right. Summer Games 2008, Beijing. This is very clever. So the red with the white silhouette in it, it looks like a Chinese seal, like a red seal stamp. And the character in it is the Chinese character Jing, which literally means the capital. And it's stylized to look like a, a dancing person. That's great, easy. The font is I think a little, for me, the font is a little too, uh, I'm trying to figure out how best to describe it. Um, it. If I were designing, if me, 
personally, if I were designing the emblem for an Olympic Games in China, uh, I would not allow myself to use that font because uh, I think I, I would get notes. I, I think it would come across as stereotypical. But if they're doing it, then I guess it's fine. Um, but it's not maybe as visually clean, but the logo I love. Winter Games 2010, Vancouver. Speaking of someone who lived very nearby and got to actually attend some of this, the Winter Games in Vancouver were a blast. Easily the best Olympic mascots that have ever existed, but that is not what I'm talking about today. The logo, we have some ups and downs. The symbol is an Inukshuk, which anyone in Canada of a certain age will remember from the Canada Heritage Minute what an Inukshuk is. No, the people will know we were here. And this is a particular Inukshuk, uh, the name of which translates to friend, and it stands in Vancouver in a park. However, one mark against it, I really don't like the, the haphazard colors. I don't think it was necessary, especially when in the style guide for this, it could be used with just solid colors. I think that would have looked much, much better. This is, for some reason, it's this 1990s throwback of like color mishmash that I don't think needs to be there. Secondly, it's the third in our series of, hey, we've uh, co-opted an indigenous symbol for a symbol of the Olympic games. And also we're still, still, really terrible to our indigenous people. Uh. Thanks, Vanok. <laughs> Summer Games 2012, London. This is the logo that London bid for the games with. Every city that bids on the Olympics does a logo package up for their bid. And that is too many logos for me to talk about. There's some really interesting ones in there, though. There, you know, the rabbit hole goes deep, right? Because any time there's an Olympic Games, there was probably five or six cities that got to the point of, like, really trying to get the Olympic Committee to select them as the host city, and they all had logos for that. So, you know, any Olympics will have, like, five or six really interesting logos for it. And this is the one that... London put together for their bid package to get the 2012 games. And the logo for the actual games was this, which is a mess. <laughs> it frankly, sorry, it's a mess. I know there are probably some Olympic 2012 logo apologists that are like, well, you know, in retrospect, you know, no, it's it it's not it's not good. The colors, the all there was lots of different colors. They were all uh, pretty garish, uh, unfavorably compared to silhouettes of certain things, and it's just, it's, I guess they were trying to be really, really edgy and modern and hyped up, and it did not work. Winter Games 2014, Sochi. On the other side of things, um, Russia, uh, phoned this in, um, Apparently, the the dark blue and then the, the the white with just the outline is like the dark blue is like the the Black Sea and the white with the outline is the Caucasus. So this is like where those two meet. Uh, I don't know. look. It's a nice font. It's a very it feels very Russian. The font. I appreciate the utilitarian aspect of it, but it's like, look, it's Sochi. That's the word, dot ru. We'll put our URL in there. We'll put the top level Russian domain on the on the logo. Uh, it's not a logo. <laughs> it's, 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 not, it's not a logo, it's a type mark. And it's, it's acceptable. Summer Games 2016, Rio. This is this is cool. This, you know, it's colorful, but not in the sort of off-putting 1990s way. You've got the green and the yellow in there that says Brazil. The image sort of, they said it was inspired by the Matisse painting The Dance. It's like these three interconnected figures. Um, 
They were accused of plagiarism by a charity based in Telluride. Uh, this, the, nothing ever happened with that, but you know, it's like they were like, no, it's just, it's just also people kind of linked together. It's not actually the same sort of thing. The Rio one, I don't know. In its time at the Rio games, I was like, mm, don't like that. Looking back on it now, eh, yeah, yeah, I kind of like it. Not, not like top five, but I dig it. I have no plans to annotate a top five, by the way. Winter Games 2018, Pyeongchang. This one is, it's too clever, is the problem. The, the two different symbols are stylized versions of the Korean writing for the first syllables of the words in Pyeongchang. And it's meant to look like the like a square, like the open square where all people can meet, and then the star again as a motif there, and that's cool. But it looks it it looks minimal, but it's too busy to be minimalist. And I don't know, it's something about the thin lines, and it's not there's not enough, not enough here. I don't like it that much. Sorry, Pyeongchang. Summer Games 2020, Tokyo. No, not that one. This was never a real Olympic logo, which is a shame, because it slaps. We all know it slaps, but this was done. This is basically fan art. This is Olympic logo fanfic, and it was never a real thing. This was done by a designer. Sorry, no, the actual Tokyo logo uh, was this. No, that was their bid logo with a bunch of sakura and multicolors. Cool, not what they actually ended up settling on. They settled on this, which is also not the final logo because this was accused of plagiarism by a theater whose logo is this. And the Olympic committee was like, no, that's not. And the designer was like, no, absolutely not. And they didn't, they weren't going to do anything until they found out that the designer had had other people accuse him of plagiarism for other designs. And then they were like, you know what? Let's just, let's just, let's, let's just extricate ourselves from this whole problem and come up with a totally new design, which is this. And I quite like this. The pattern, the blue on white pattern is called Ichimatsu Moyo and was popular in the Edo period in Japan for fabric and stuff. And then there's this sort of negative space implication of a sakura flower in the middle. And yeah, it's nice. It, it's, it's, it's no Tokyo 64, but it's also very clearly Japanese without uh, being stupid about it, I guess. And there you go. There's all the logos. There's all the logos and everything that I had to say about them because I, I had a couple hours and too much nervous energy to not make something about it. So I hope you enjoyed that little history lesson on the Olympic logos. I, I, don't, I don't know why I did this or what else I have to contribute to this conversation, but I hope you liked it. <laughs> okay, bye.